to D, and welcome to your next lesson on factoring trinomials. Uh, we're going to try a new approach here. It's called the bottoms up approach, and so our topic today is still factoring. And our goal, I can factor complex trinomials using the bottoms up approach. Now, when we first go through it, it's going to look exceedingly complicated, but then when I start to go through a few very quick ones, um, it's going to look a lot easier. So I'm going to do it step by step, so if you forget what to do, you can go back. And we're going to start, the first step says, multiply the front coefficient with the constant term and place it in the top location of the x. So you need to make yourself an x, and to start with, you take the 5 and the 12, and you multiply them together, and you put them at the top of the x. Then you take the middle term, and you put it in the bottom. Okay, Pretty easy to start off with. Uh, step two says, if the signs in the brackets are to be the same, the two numbers you are looking for multiply to the top. So here's what I want you to do to remember this. If the signs in the bracket are, the, are to be the same, the two numbers you are looking for multiply to the top number and add to the bottom. If the signs of the brackets are going to be different, the two numbers you are looking for will multiply to the top and subtract to the bottom. So this is kind of the same as when we did simple trinomials. The two ones we're looking for are, are going to be different, so they have to multiply to 60 with a difference of 4. And can you think of two numbers that multiply to 60 with a difference of 4? Uh, how about 6 and 10? It's the easiest way to multiply to 60. Let's see what our step 3 says. Uh, I'm going to carry on this down here, and we know they have to multiply to 60, subtract to 4, and we found them. It's 6 and 10, and so we're going to put those in our sides. Step 3 says, place the two numbers in the sides of the cross. If the brackets have the same sign, give the side numbers the same sign as the middle term of the trinomial. If the brackets have different signs, give the larger of the two numbers the same sign as the middle term in the trinomial. So we are subtracting, so I know I need more positives than I need negatives, so I need to make this 10 positive and this 6 negative, because these have different signs. All right, okay. Moving to the next step. Now remember, we had a 6 here and a 10 here. Our 10 was positive and our 6 was negative. Let's see what step 4 has to offer. Divide each of the side numbers by the coefficient of the squared variable. So in this case, that's going to be this 5 that's out front of the squared variable and reduce to lowest terms. So I have to go over 5, over 5. Now, negative 6 over 5 is, also, is already in lowest terms, so the only thing I have to reduce to lowest terms here is this 10 over 5, which is going to be positive 2 over 1. And now it says bring the bottom up to be the coefficient of the variable and write as a binomial. So here's what that means. I'm going to write down my two brackets. This 5 here gets an x, and then I bring it up in front of the negative 6. So it's going to be 5x minus 6. And over here, this 1 gets an x, and I bring it up to be in front of the 2, so I get 1x, which I'm just going to write as x, plus 2. Now let's double check it. 5x times x is 5x squared. Then we have 5x times 2 is plus 10x. Negative 6 times x is negative 6x. And negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. Those two middle terms combine to give me plus 4x. And that's what I had in the first place. Okay. Now I'm going to do a few more of these for you so you can see what this approach really can do for us. And notice I have big bold letters here that says important. This method will not work if you forget to take out the common factor. It doesn't take the common factor into consideration, so always take out the common factor first. So, with that in mind, there's a common factor in this one. i got to take out the 5 as a common factor, and I'm left with 5p squared plus 14p plus uh, 8. Okay, 
so now we're going to go through the bottoms up approach the bottoms up approach and and i'm going to ignore this five out front and i'm not using this one anymore i'm using the one that's in the brackets so i do five times eight is 40 and then i put the middle term which is 14 down here this plus over here tells me the signs are the same so they have to multiply to 40 and add to 14 since they're the same they have to do that so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 40 and add to 14 and again we got those easy ones 10 and 4 multiply to 40 and add to 14 now since the signs are the same and we look at the middle term signs are the same they're both positive so I'm gonna put positives here and then I have to reduce to lowest terms so I put this over 5 and I put this over 5 and reduce to lowest terms. So this is plus 2 over 1, and this one's already in lowest terms. So remember, now you give the variable to the bottom. In this case, it's a p, so I can give the p on the bottom, and I bring the bottom up, that's why it's called bottoms up, uh, to be the variable term. So in this case, if we look at our little x, we have p, 1p, plus 2, and 5p plus 4. And you can expand that if you want to, um, but I'm not going to. I'm going to carry on and do a few more. Now there's no common factor in this case, so I do 6, six times 4, to put it in the top is 24, and the middle term is 5. This time, this tells me that the signs are different, so they have to multiply to 24 with a difference of 5. So that would be 8 and 3. So I'm going to put the 8 here and the 3 here. Now the signs are different. So I need to put different signs here and I know I need more positives because I ended up with more positives in the middle. So I'm going to put a positive with the 8 and a negative with the 3. And now I have to put it over top of the coefficient of the squared term and reduce to lowest terms. Now this negative 3 over 4 doesn't reduce but this one does to 2 over 1 and it's plus 2 over 1. So now remember the bottom gets the variable so I, in this case it's a B so I put the B's on the bottom now I can write down my two brackets from those two sides. I need 1B plus 2 is what that says so B plus 2 and 4B minus 3. 4B minus 3. Okay, carrying on. This one again no common factors so 4 times 5 is 20 so I'm going to put that at the top and 12 goes down at the bottom. Here the signs are the same, so since the signs are the same, um, they have to multiply to 20 and have a sum of 12. Well, what multiplies to 20 with a sum of 12? Here goes our favorite numbers again, 10 and 2. Okay. And since the signs are the same, and if we look at the middle term, they're both going to be negative, we need to give these both negatives, and then put them over the front coefficient and reduce to lowest terms. So if I reduce this to lowest terms, um, 2 goes into 10 5 times and into 4 twice. And if I reduce this to lowest terms, 2 goes into 2 once and into 4 twice. And now I have to give the bottom the variable. So I'm giving the variable on the bottom and giving it the p. And I can write down my brackets. It's going to be 2p minus 5 and 2p minus 1. Moving right along, we got two more that I'm going to walk you through here, and then hopefully you know this method right off the bat. Uh, can anything come out of here? Don't think so. So we do 4 times 25 is 100. And we got 15 in the bottom. Signs are different. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 100 with a difference of 15. And that's going to be 20 and 5. Uh, now, since the signs are different and the middle term is negative, I know that the bigger number has to be negative because I have to have more negatives than positives. Put over top of the coefficient of x squared and reduce to lowest terms. Uh, the 5 over 4 doesn't reduce, but the 20 over 4 will to negative 5 over 1. And now my two brackets are going to be uh, x minus 5 when I bring the bottom up. And on the other side, bringing the bottom up, I got 4x plus 5. Last time, I can take a 3 out of here, and I get 2x to the 6th uh, plus 5x cubed minus 3. 
And so two times negative, or two times three gives me six, and then the middle term is five, and I have to ask myself, uh, since the signs are different, what multiplies to six and has a difference of five, that's gonna be six and one. Um, I have to put two underneath both of these things. Uh, and I know, uh, since the signs are different, the bigger one has to be positive, so I'm gonna put a plus with the six, and now I have to reduce to lowest terms. So two goes into that three times, and into that once, and this is positive, or that's negative, sorry. That's going to be negative, and we bring the bottoms up, keep that um, common factor out there, so I've got x plus 3 and 2x minus 1. And that is the bottoms up approach. If you like it, use it. If you're getting along quite well with the other one, don't worry about the bottoms up approach, but it's just an alternate method because factoring sometimes uh, is hard for people. So if you like it, use it. If not, um, keep doing what you were doing. And that's it for today.